I got a voicemail to call this number about four serious allegations. Uh huh. So, what's your name, please? First name is Howie. H O W I E. The last name? I'll spell it F E L T E R S N A T C H. Howie F E L. F E. Huh? Oh, I beg your pardon. Howie Spelter. Felter Snatch. Howie Felter Snatch. Okay, one second. Okay, uh, let me uh, look in the, in the system. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so Howie, this is Richard Parker with the badge ID 109113. Okay, I'm working with the CRA. This is the Crime Investigation Department of CRA. Now, we have received and the legal notice from the tax department regarding your name and it has been you have been charged with the tax evasion charges tax so evasion can i know yes sir oh. uh so can i know that uh, you have an attorney for yourself yeah um, i've used one before ben matlock but i haven't used them in a while okay now the a, thing is i had that, a, that, i uh, had a dwi and he, he worked on that for me <laughs> right now, uh, for the tax evasion, the your case has been already registered into the courthouse. Now, uh, do you, if you need the information, I can go with your legal paper and give you the information. Do you want me to do that? Well, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you have a pen and paper handy? Okay, okay, go ahead. First of all, you have to write my name. My name is Richard Parker. And my badge ID is 109113. Okay. Now, before I proceed with your legal paper, I need to tell you that the plans are recorded and monitored by the CRA officers, the Aegis office, and the RCMP officers. Okay. Now, uh, this is regarding your taxes, which you have paid for last five years. This is not for the present year taxes. I'll explain you. Every every five years, CRA conducts a random statutory audit on the tax file uh, tax, tax filers. And when we did a tax audit on your filings, we came to know that there are some miscalculations and there are some mistakes in your tax filings. So that is the reason right now you have been listed as a primary suspect for tax evasion. Now, I need to ask you one more thing, sir, that do you file your taxes on your own or you uh, hire an accountant CPA or any company? No, I got an accountant. Duncan Hines does them. Okay. Now, uh, as you know, that this uh, type of case is against a government and it's a felony. Okay. Felony? Now, uh, I need to have... Yes, sir. Because I made it's a mistake? Because I might have made a mistake? It's a felony? Sir, we will think, uh, we will, you know, get to know afterwards that it was a mistake or it was an intention. But in the legal manner, if we go, that it's a felony. Okay. That don't seem right. But so okay. We don't know that, uh, we don't know that you have done it by mistake or it was an you know, human error or it was an well, Duncan uh, Hines, if, if, there were, if there were any mistakes, Duncan Hines made them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I give him the paperwork, he does the taxes. I don't know. Okay. Now, whatever it is, sir, my job is to, you know, inform you regarding this case. And if you want, I can transfer this to the tax department, the officer, and he can explain you better. Because I am from the legal uh, department, and I just received your legal paper, and I was only told to inform you regarding this thing. Okay. So if you want more information and you want to, you know, well, yeah. whatever it is, you can Yeah, keep... I want more information. Okay, if it's a felony, of course oh. I want more. Okay, hold on, sir. I'll transfer you. Okay. Your one has been transferred to senior investigating officer. This is senior officer. Daniel Richard with the batch ID number 
9416-55298. How may I assist your call today? I don't know. Richard Parker uh, transferred me to you. He said it was a felony. All right. Well, I, I, I believe. I, I don't know. Why. Yes, I will. I believe that you had a word with one of my junior, and he explained to you about this case. And you know that, being an you know Canadian agent and being a Canadian you know citizen, you know that the tax evasion matter is a very you know serious matter here, and there is an arrest warrant out on your name, which well, will I, get executed that, that's once what, we disconnect mm -hmm. this kind of was you know conversation, sir. That's why I was asking uh, Richard Parker, how can you say I did it on purpose and it's a felony and I'm going to be arrested? How, how, how do you know it was a mistake? I'm sorry? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. So, you had a word with one of my junior, and I believe he explained to you everything about this case, right? Except how much I owe. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know more about this case, okay? Okay. So, before I do that... Can you just grab a pen and a piece of paper handy so that I can give you at least a basic information about the case first? I got that. For, uh, yeah, I already got that. Richard told me to get one. All right. So, first thing first, you can note down my name. In case if this phone call get disconnected by any chance, call back and ask for agent, senior agent, Daniel Sen Richard. Sen senior agent, Daniel Richard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you can note on my federal batch ID number. Okay. It's 94619-55298. Oh, okay, it's a long badge number there. Daniel. I'm uh, sorry? I said it's a long badge number. Mm-hmm, it, it is, sir. Now, I want you to note down the very most important thing that will be your case number. Your case number starts with the alphabet, AC. AC. With the numbers 114. 114. 7482. Okay. All right. Yep. So now I want you to repeat the case number and the batch ID number which I provided to you in order to verify that you have the accurate information, sir. 94619-55298 AC1147482 All right sir so you have the right information now oh, before good. I proceed with your case paper I want to notify you that these lines are being federally recorded and monitored by the officers of the CRA and the jury members of the courthouse so do not interrupt me and listen to me very carefully. Once I complete my part, I will give you a fair enough chance to speak and raise your questions, okay? Okay. Alrighty. So now, we have received a legal notice against your name for tax fraud, which means we have done an audit on your tax filing between the years of 2013 to 2017. And we found out something unusual under the calculation of your tax filing. We found out that the duration of these five years, there was a miscalculation over your tax filing for the amount of $3,982. And now it has been claimed that it has been unpaid. 3982 Okay. $3,982. I got it. Go ahead. Already? Now it is claimed that it has been unpaid or it was a miscalculation. CRA have also found that you are a regular taxpayer. And depending on that, CRA has also discovered that this was not a result of an innocent negligence, but it was a willful act done with the intent to defraud the CRA. How can you so say that? Been, you know, certain how can stories? you say how can you say it was willful? How can you say that? Well, I would like to tell you that first I need to complete my part, and then I will give you a chance, well, a fair enough chance to, you know, answer you all your questions. You, you can't say it's willful. It's, uh, I, I give my taxes to Duncan Hines. He does them and sends them in. I don't know how you can I say it's you willful. That, so. Oh, so okay. first and first, oh, let me ahead. complete the case paper go here, okay? okay? Yeah, okay, go ahead. So as you know that, any crime against the CRA is a crime against country, and any crime against country is not at all tolerable, okay? 
So now uh, under the statement which have been proclaimed by the higher commission, there are four serious allegations which has, have been pressed under your name. Uh, All right, and this four serious allegations comes under chapter 13 under section 21A, count one. Violation of Federal Tax Regulation Act, count two. Violation of Canada Revenue Code, count three. Theft by deception, and count four, willful misrepresentation of information to the government How? organization. How, where do you get this okay. willful stuff? Now, if I'm talking about tax evasion, it means intentional conduct to defeat the income tax laws. And tax evasion is a felony and the most serious type of a crime. The maximum prison sentence is of five years, and the maximum fine is up to eighty to ninety thousand dollars. At this part of time, what? CRA have decided to forcefully recollect the amount from you by oh. involving the Canada Revenue Code, which okay. is six three three one H against you. This code means. CRA will be taking a legal course of action by taking this matter into the courthouse. And if you found guilty inside the court, you will end up with the penalty charges up to $90,000. All right? Well, so now if you have any questions regarding this case, you may go ahead and ask yes, me before I do. we go with I the do. further legal action, I do. Sir. I do. How can you say it's willful? Go ahead. How can you possibly say it's willful? Well, the record indicates here, and I do know that I can see from my end here that you have been a regular taxpayer, and I'm not even saying that, and it's clearly mentioned in the case file that you do pay your taxes and you pay it on a regular basis, but the problem is the way you have calculated your taxes is I, not correct, sir. I don't calculate them. Duncan Hines does. I just give him the papers. And can you tell me how do you file your taxes? Do you have an accountant? or Yeah, you Duncan Hines does. Third party? Duncan Hines does them. I give him the paperwork. Duncan he Hines. sends it in. Okay, so you take a help of a third party, right? Well, yeah, I can't do them. And from how long you're filing your taxes with the help of Duncan Hines? Oh, gee, 10 years at least. Okay. So now, at this point of time, let me tell you that CRA has never suggested any citizen from Canada to, you know, take a help of any third party while filing their taxes. Well, so it was your decision to hire any third party. Because I don't know how to do party. them, sir. I don't know how to do I them. Do, I do understand, Mr. Hovey. I do understand your concern. But the thing is, the case is under your name, and you were the one who filed, you know, your taxes with the help of any third party. We never suggested you to hire any third party. And if your third party is making any mistake, we are not going behind any third party, sir, as it's your name on the tax file, not your, you know, third person name or any of your tax, you know, preparer name. Okay. And let me tell you one thing, sir. If any mistakes have been done under your name from your accountant or any third party, we are not at all considered about any third person or a third party in this case, sir. Well, I all right? Am. You're the accurate person who, who has to face all the legal consequences. All right. What I got to do? Okay. So you tell me at this part of time, over this federally recorded line, what was the reason behind this tax fraud? Have you done this intentionally or was it a human error? How can you say it was a fraud now? I didn't fraud nobody. Okay. So you mean to say this this was a human error? It was not done intentionally from well, your yeah, it was a human error. Mm-hmm. Okay, sir. Because the reason why I'm asking you these things is just because this call has been getting recorded and your words over this phone call is going to, you know, create a great impact on this case. So that oh. is why I'm asking you this. Yeah, well, I, did, I didn't do it on purpose. You didn't do it. Uh, you didn't do it on purpose, right? Right. Okay. So you tell me at this point of time, what would you like to do? I don't know. What can I do? Because right now I can see I have checked your past records and I see that you have been a law-abiding citizen with no prior criminal records, right? Well, I got that one DWI, but Ben Matlock mm -hmm. got me out of that. So that is only the reason, sir. We may give you a second chance. All right, but I'm not sure about that, and I have to, you know, confirm it first, but I need to have your words over this recorded line 
that how would you like to take care of this matter? Would you like to fight this case against the CRA while hiring an attorney? Or would you like to take care of the situation while coming up with this miscalculated amount in order to pay back well, to the I'll government? I'll pay it back. I'll pay it back. I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I don't care. I'm not going to jail. A All felony. right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transfer this call all right to my higher authority and they will guide you with the payment plan how you can you know come up with this miscalculated amount in order to pay to the government and get this case settled outside the court okay oh, okay so stay on the line one moment while i transfer you okay all right thanks for holding the line your line has been transferred to the senior investigation officer this is trevor phillips how may i assist your call today I don't know. You're the third guy I talked to. Okay. I believe I'm talking with Michael Levoy. Who? No. Okay. It's a Howie Felter Snatch. Yes. Howie Felter Snatch. Yes, Mr. Felter Snatch. How are you doing today? Okay. Okay. All right. So, as I can see here, that this mistake has been done between the years of 2013. Yeah, I already know all that. Seventeen. Well, I'm having your all the case files and documentations right here in front oh. of me, okay. and as I can see here, uh, that this mistake is for four years for the amount of three thousand nine hundred and eighty-two dollars. The government believes that you were intentionally in the. I told the other guy I didn't do anything intentionally. I did not do anything intentionally. I wish you guys would quit saying that. Okay. All right. So you want to resolve this case out yeah. of the courthouse? Yeah. Yeah. I, want to, I don't want to go to no courthouse. Yes. I, I just want to take okay. care of this. What I got to do? Send you a check? So, so do you have so do you have the access of this funds? In the bank. I don't have it with me, but I can send you a check. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Can you tell me, like, how far is your bank from you? The bank? I don't Bank of Canada, there's probably, I don't know, half mile away, mile. Okay, so do you have the access of $3,982, yeah. almost of $4,000? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I got more than that in there. Okay, so in order to resolve this case out of the courthouse, uh, it's just not like that, that you can simply pay the money and resolve the case out of the courthouse. No. Why? It's not going to be work like that. Why? It has to be done under the terms, conditions, and the protocols that are laid down by the federal courthouse. Well, the federal courthouse, what do they want me to do? Well, the higher authorities won't want you to comply with their requirements because they're more interested in the case and the intentions. So it's not only about the money, but it's about setting an example and treating the individual in accordance to the law. Oh. Resolving such cases out of the courthouse is not that easy, oh. as there are certain very strict protocols and the terms and conditions that are laid down by the federal courthouse. Okay, well, what I got to do? Okay. So, there are two important conditions which is laid down by the courthouse. Okay. The option which we can provide you, it's known as offer and compromise. Have you heard about offer and compromise before? Never heard of it. Offer and compromise. Uh, under this option, offer and compromise to meet the payment arrangements today within the next one hour and 30 minutes on the same recorded line under the two important conditions which is offered by the federal courthouse which they would want to verify and for that here's the first condition till the time this issue is not resolved not resolved we i want to resolve stay, it yes but until you get resolved we need to stay connected on this same call we are not authorized to disconnect with this conversation as the higher authorities are on this barge conversation. Barge? They shall be observing whether... What's a barge I'm conversation? I'm sorry, you keep interrupting. Well, I don't know what a, a barge, barge conversation. I don't know what a barge conversation is. I'm sorry. 
oh, well, the barge conversation means only, not only the you and me on this recorded phone call, but this is a three-way conference line. One is with the Attorney General's Office, Canada Revenue Agency Headquarters, and the Federal Courthouse members. Okay, well... They shall be observing okay. whether we are following all the protocols as laid by them. Okay, good. And if at any, if at any point of time, if they feel that your cooperation is compromised, then I'm afraid they will terminate the arrangements of offer and compromise. They want you to stay connected so that we can have it as a recorded evidence. Yeah, okay, I'll stay connected. Approved. I'll stay, okay, I'll stay connected. What else I got to do? All right. Now, before I give you the last condition, I need to ask you, do you authorize into our department to publish this matter in the local media and the local newspapers? Yeah, I don't care. Or you want to resolve this matter confidentially, keeping it completely I don't, private? I don't, I don't really care what you do. Put it in a paper, put it on the news, I don't care. I just want to get this thing over with. Okay. All right. Let me give you the last condition here. <sighs> giving, giving a space to your dignity that you have been maintaining in the society and you are considering the subject matter as an honest mistake. We have not yet informed anyone about this case, neither to your state authorities nor right. in public. All right. We are, we are giving one more chance to resolve this case, but we have to ensure that this is only between you and our department, whereby you shall not be entitled to discuss this matter partially or entirely with anyone till the time the issue is not resolved. If found that you are disclosing about this oh. case, then the resolvement procedure shall be immediately terminated. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what have I got to do? Let me give you an example. You just tell me what I got to do? Sure. So, <clears throat> let me tell you how it shall work. There won't be exchange of friends over the phone call. We are not authorized to ask for any of your personal financial information. Well, you should already have it. Credit card, debit card, or any banking information for that matter. Only the higher authorities shall decide on the payment terms, which can be a cash deposit into a CRA chaos machine. Since all your bank accounts, credit cards, debit cards are under surveillance, you're not able to issue a check or do a bank-to-bank -bank transfer to meet the payment, so you shall be required to do a cash deposit into the chaos machine, into the uh, CRA account. Where's this kiosk machine? A chaos? Where is it? I know what it is. Where is it? Okay. I will provide you all the relevant information, sir. So, once you deposit the money into that chaos machine, I will fix an appointment with the taxation officer. We're going to be come down to your home tomorrow at your convenient time. We will bring you all the documentation and we'll explain you all the mistakes that were spotted in your tax filing we and merge. also give you a proper direction. Okay. Yes, on how you can avoid such mistakes in future. Okay. So, yeah. So, I want you to grab a pen and piece of paper and uh, your driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. And you can drive towards your bank. I can't drive. I, I, I told you I had a GWI. I don't have a license. GWI. You don't have a license. Then how are you going to be reached at the bank? I don't know. Maybe my uncle can bring me. I didn't know I had to go anywhere. Your uncle, your uncle will drive to you. Yeah, I can ask him. Okay. All right. So ask him. I'm uh, here on the line. Okay. Just Uncle, let me know what you're room. Date. He's okay. in the other room. Wait a minute. Let me ask him. Hey, Uncle Ben. Sure. Uncle Ben. Can you take me into the bank? No, the bank. 
You said he won't bring me. Hello? Yes. He won't bring me. He won't bring you, okay. So, your Uncle Ben, where is he from? Ben, Uncle Ben. It's my Uncle Ben Chode. He won't bring me. Which okay. is what you what, are. What is that language? Oh, that's your I language. Mean, uh, what was the word you say? It's, it's your language, language, Ben Chode. It it's your language. You want to hear some more? Do you know? You hear that, Uncle Ben? It's my Uncle Ben Chode. Hey, Ben Colody, you still there? I'm here. You scamming bastard. You fucking piece of shit. Just mind your own business, asshole. I mind my own business. Don't you're, the, here. you're the fucking thief. You asshole. Could have given you all of my wallet. But there's someone who's torn it apart. And he's taken almost all that I've got.